So today we are making this bad boy. This is the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. This is the so-called original version before uh, Cloud screwed it all up. Follow along for the next eternity while I painstakingly craft each and every piece of this and weld it all together. Stay tuned. So I've got my chunk of AR450 from the steel mill. Uh, time to clean all the mill scale off of it. This is just some plastic sheeting with waterproof canvas underneath uh, just in case it leaks through, which it has before. Uh, I've got my little, yeah, little blocks of wood, I don't know if you can see them, just to elevate the, um, the plate a little bit so that it, uh, the vinegar can get underneath the plate as well, so I don't have to flip it. I'll probably let this sit overnight. Um, that should be plenty. I'll clean it all up and now I'll get to straightening out the plate. Alright, so it's the next day. It's time to take the steel out of the vinegar bath. I'm going to use some scotch Brite to um, get the mill scale off. That's all, that'll be loosened up. And then I'll just hose it off to um, you know get, to get all the vinegar off. As you can see, uh, despite two layers of Waterproof material, it leaked everywhere. Oh well. Um, it'll probably rust a little bit because it's going to be, you know, clean, bare steel. Um, I'll try to dry it off quickly, but it doesn't really matter. I, um, I'm going to be sanding and grinding on it a lot later, so if it rusts a little bit, who cares? So, same old story, the plate is bent um, roughly the same as typical, uh, maximum about 3 16ths right here, uh, that's the most I measured. Interestingly enough, it's completely flat for the first uh, 9 inches I think it is, and then it suddenly cups. So I've got it all bent up. This was a really tricky one. I had to bend it three different times. You can see the marks on the plate. Um, it was flat at one end and then it kind of had like a complex curve. Um, so I had to take it out, take out the, the deflection in pieces basically. I did pretty well. Um, you can see there is a little curve. It's right about here. It's kind of straight and then it curves and then it's straight again. The problem is if I took out that little bit then it would make the flat part at the end then kick out a little bit more. Then I'd have to correct that part and it just kind of gets this into this nightmare of little tiny adjustments in every direction. Um, right now, there's no more than a uh, thirty second of an inch of total deflection, so we're not even talking a millimeter here. I'm calling this one good. Real realistically, the all the heat from the welding and everything will probably warp the blade slightly anyway, so it's all kind of uh, a pointless waste of time. But maybe it'll bend it the correct way, and I'll get really lucky. Probably not. So, both sides have been, yeah, oh, that is really hot, have been sanded to uh, 120 grit. Um, I did a little experiment. Um, normally I do two passes with the 36 grit, then one with the 80, one with the 120. I found some 16 grit, 
and it saved me a pass. I could do one with this, one with the 80, and then one with the 120. Uh, I may try to find something in more in between, uh, maybe like a 50 or 60 grit, but uh, it worked well, and saving me one pass per side is probably at least 20 minutes per side, so that's not bad. Uh, now I'm going to cut the slash out of the end of the sword here um, with this bad boy. I never cut hardened steel with it. We'll see how that goes. I'll just have to go really slow. Well, uh, very slow, probably equivalent to cutting one inch normal mild steel. I counted about a minute and an inch. So it actually took me almost 20 minutes just to make that one cut. Um, I split it into three cuts, and it probably should have been four cuts. The After the first cut, it was a little long, and the blade was very hot. Uh, I may have damaged it. I have two teeth missing, but I didn't inspect the blade before, so I'm assuming just due to the hardness of the steel, that's how I lost two teeth, but um, it still feels sharp. The teeth look a little dinged up, but not horrendously. I'll have to do some more uh, experimentation, um, but if it's going to eat blades at $50 a blade, it's not really worth it. I may just stick to the angle grinder, especially since it doesn't seem really any faster. I could cut that off in 20 minutes with an angle grinder, but this doesn't really require any cleanup either. This is basically a perfect edge, just a little sanding, and it'll be nice and smooth. So, yeah, not bad for an experiment. I did buy an extra blade just in case. Alright, so I've got the shape cut out, all the edges are squared off, uh, all the lines are nice and straight. Uh, I've sanded it to about, I think 120 grit, very smooth. It's time to carve the bevel into the edge, and then once I'm done with that, we'll go with the random orbital sander and finish up the surface. Not really sure where I'll stop. Probably do 120, 180, 240, 320. I'm not, not even sure what I have uh, in stock, but um, I want to basically finish the whole blade and then we can work on actual construction. Turns out, uh, letting the cord rub against the somewhat sharpened edge of the blade repeatedly, not the greatest idea. It's just rubbing alcohol. I'm trying um, a little trick I heard to clean the sandpaper I was just using. You see the pieces on the floor over there. Um, it's really a woodworking tool, that random orbital sander I'm using, and so is the sandpaper. Uh, it doesn't last very long. In fact, you can see there's five pieces just for this one side and this one grit only. Uh, the rubbing alcohol cleans the sandpaper without waterlogging it since the rubbing alcohol evaporates quickly. Um, it seemed to work pretty well. I got more life, I would say, than normal. Um, I would say maybe double the life. Um... But still, as it is a woodworking tool, the sandpaper just wears out very quickly. So uh, you end up using a ton of it. I buy it in, uh, you know, large quantities over here. Uh, but yeah, so this is one side done. I've really tried to reduce the appearance of all the rotary sanding marks and everything. You can still see some lines 
and some deeper scratches. But the um, little little palm sander really helps reduce the appearance. Here, I'll uh, I'll actually turn it over for you so you can compare real quick. So here's the other side, and you can just see the it's shinier, but you can see the all the marks and the lines from sanding, uh, and the scratches are very deep and very obvious. Um, you can just see them right at the surface, you know, um, no problem. So all I'm trying to do is just blend it all in and make it a little bit cleaner. Um, this isn't really a particularly shiny sword, so the, the dulling is actually a, uh, a side benefit. So I'm not sure how much footage I have cut out, probably a lot. Um, a few hours have gone by and I've used, you can see that stack of sandpaper over there, probably 15, 16 pieces of sandpaper. Uh, this is about as good as it's going to get. Um, it's pretty even. You, the swirlies are mostly gone. It's actually somewhat reflective. If I take a shot down here, you can kind of see the reflection of the wall over there. Um, this is only like 80 and then 120 grit. Uh, I lost feeling in my hand, so I feel that's, that's good enough. Um, most of the sword is going to be blackened anyway. And All right, so we're in my basement down here uh, with my drill press. I'm going to see if I can cut out these material holes with this uh, carbide hole saw. Uh, I'm not really sure. I never tried to cut hardened steel like this. This is rated for uh, one inch of stainless steel, so... To the prayer, at least. But uh, there's only one way to find out. Alright, so while I'm down here with my drill press, I'm going to... Um, cut out some holes for the central part of the guard that goes around the material holes. Um, you'll see what I mean when I'm done, but I have four holes to cut out, two for each side, and then I'll um, cut the actual pieces out and I'll put them on the sword so you can see what I mean. So to explain better what I was doing with these holes, this is this piece. So it's going to end up something like this. Um, that center part, I don't have enough hands to show you, but that center part, uh, hang on. The center stripe is going to get cut out. Um, and then the little holes are just for plug welds and back here this is a separate section these this part is going to get cut out completely this will meet up with the end very end of the sword something like that um, there's kind of a hinge that that joins these two pieces um, that will be added later but uh, you get the general idea I just got a whole bunch of cutting to do now. So the hole saw experiment on the sword blade worked, as you can see, but I ruined two hole saws with it. So failure and success, I guess. Uh, I like the hole saws because they leave a nice, perfect hole. Um, I just did a little tiny bit of sanding to clean it up, but. You can't get much better than that. I previously used the plasma cutter in the past and then die ground and sanded it and making perfect circles is harder than it looks. Um, in the future I might try the hole saw again but I might try heating up this bit of metal quite a bit ahead of time to soften it and that might give me the um, 
the compromise that I need uh, so I don't ruin so many hole saws. It also took probably two hours to cut, so not really a fan of uh, doing it that way, but I am a fan of these nice perfect circles, so we'll see. So ignore the fact that I cut off one of the plug weld holes. You can see it on the piece down there. I forgot that the end of this is not solid, so that hole was a waste of time. I'll have these two plug welds, and then I'm going to plasma cut this last little bit off. And this will be um, under that hinge I was talking about, so I will do a full weld right there. Um, that'll be three welds just to hold down this piece on the surface of the sword, which should be more than sufficient. So my battery is almost dead, but here's the sword, the holes are done, I just sanded them lightly to finish them up. Um, the bevel is put on, but not fully sharpened, and I've sanded the whole thing down nice and even for a, a you know, smooth finish, consistent finish I should say. And here's the centerpieces. I didn't film a lot of this, um, I just sanded them, I clamped them together and then I sanded them equal to each other so both sides of the sword are the same. And then I just lightly sanded all the imperfections and grinder marks and, you know, vice marks and everything off of them. Um, just need to do a little bit of a mock-up actually. I'll bring you back for this in a second. There's a lot more to come here, but this is the uh, the gist of it. Um, there we plug welds here and here. This will be fully welded in here. This piece will be fully welded in here as well. And a sort of hinge goes over that to cover that weld. Then I'll have a full weld back here where the handle is going to be. And um, that's about it for now. So, around the central pieces, on the, uh, the middle of the guard sword thing, um, there's a border that goes around three sides. I'm just going to use this one eighth by half inch uh, flat bar, and I'm going to just use a torch and bend it uh, around this, leaving a small gap, probably an eighth of an inch. I may even just um, use more eighth inch material as a, uh, a shim, basically. Um, that will get brassed eventually, but not today. So what I've done here is I've just welded up a little bending jig. This was built around this little guy here. And... Um, so this will ensure that I have an inch, an eighth of an inch gap all the way around the edge. I'll just weld this flat bar down here, and then I'll just bend it around the, the outside diameter, and I'll have exactly the right shape. So, here's the end result. Um, it came out pretty well. It's not perfect. It actually looks pretty good. But um, the first one I did, I didn't have the piece inside the jig like that. And since this is a thin wall, this was heating with the outside piece and it was actually slightly bending on the corners while I was bending the outside piece. 
So the second time I left this in there as a, you know, just for the strength reasons. And uh, the second one bent better, but um, they're not perfect. But once I'm gonna have to uh, heat these up a lot to cover them in brass, and they're probably gonna warp a little bit anyway. And then I'll just stick them back in the jig and just true them up at the very end, um, just before I attach them to the sword. But I've got a good starting point, I think. As you can see, what I've done here is I um, did a quick and dirty Photoshop image of the the etched lines in the blade, and then I just cut it out on a vinyl cutter, and then this is the vinyl stencil, I guess you can call it. I'm going to use a grinder with an eighth inch uh, disc to grind all these lines in. And, um, you know, this will be my guide. And the bonus is the vinyl is actually pretty tough. So if I, if I miss a little bit, I'll probably, you know, it'll save me a lot of heartache. Uh, I'm putting, you know, real damage into a part unintended. But, um, yeah, hopefully this works. Oh, there she is. Um, came up pretty well. Not tea bag, I say. Um, I can see some areas I screwed up. I kind of overran my markings, especially in this one, both sides of this. But uh, the rest of them look quite good. There's two little, more little ones right there. And that's it. Everything else looks good to me. Um, I may try to blend in these little bits. Um, I suppose they're not, they're really shallow. I might just kind of sand them out or I might even just put a little tack weld in there and then grind it back. Maybe these ones, not really sure. It may, it, you know, I'm kind of nitpicking here. Once I blacken that whole part of the sword, it's kind of all going to blend together anyway. So, I might just leave it. Yeah, pretty straight I would say. A little clean up on the corner. We're good to go. So this is the beginnings of the um, the corners of the guard. They came out pretty well. Pretty straight. Except I 
kind of melted that one a bit. Just that corner of it. I'll have to uh, just fill that in with a weld and then grind it back again. Uh, a little too much heat on that side. Oh well. So, I've got the corner pieces um, all cleaned up, uh, smoothed out, and so forth. I've welded these two rods together on the underside and then ground it all back and I'm just going to bend this piece over to meet this side and then weld it on there. Um, having a bit of a weird porosity problem with my welder as you can see there. Um, I just got a new tank of shielding gas and I'm not sure what's up with it. Some of my welds are good and some of them aren't. Doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense, but I better figure it out before I get to the uh, the real welding. So these two little pieces I just cut are going to be this side of uh, this piece. If my glove wasn't getting in the way. Um, I've tacked them together down the bottom here. I'm just going to grind the tops round um, to kind of match that shape on the outside edge. Uh, just to keep it consistent. And then I will probably plug weld them on. We'll see. So I roughed it out with the angle grinders, it's pretty close, and now I'll finish it off with my uh, new router table that I've uh, retrofitted with die grinder bits. Should work a little bit uh, better than my old jury rig setup, but um, see ya. So I was just sanding the undersides of these just to make them nice and flat so that they will sit flush um, with that bottom piece that I just cut out. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job. I think definitely I'll plug weld these on from the underside. So after much intense deliberation with myself, um, I've decided to slot weld these end caps on, uh, they're going to say something like that. I'll drill two half inch holes and I'm going to connect them with the angle grinder. And as you can see, I'll be able to weld this piece to the bottom piece and then in between will be the sword, uh, the sword blade itself. So I'll be able to connect all the pieces together uh, with one big chunk of welding. And since this is a nice flat piece, I'll be able to grind this weld nice and smooth and flat fairly easily. Um, that's the only way these corner pieces are going to be held onto the sword. Um, that should be plenty weld, plenty big enough. That's going to be, you know, a three inch by a half inch weld. That's quite a bit. Um, I'm not worried about it coming off. It'll hold everything together solid, solidly. Hopefully, anyway.
All right, so just tack welded these on uh, on the end here, just to position them. Um, I think they look pretty good. Uh, I will do a full weld later on when these are actually on the sword, so it'll just fill in this whole area. So what I've got to work with now is these little uh, decorations, basically. Um, I stole this stole this design directly from Michael Cthulhu. Um, these are plasma cut. Um, if you don't know who Mike is, stop watching this video and go watch all of his videos. And then if you're really, really bored, in about a week, uh, come back and watch this video. But yeah, um, so these are going to be plug welded. You see the three holes there. Um, they don't need much. These are only eighth inch thick and they're protected on both sides from being knocked off. By, uh, by these pieces, so, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Um, big fans of the series might note that these pieces should be a little bit longer, and in fact, they kind of wrap around the edge a little bit. Uh, I'm doing it this way simply for um, cost savings, I guess. I mean, I could do that could melt, you know, make longer pieces and kind of melt them into the edges, but I wouldn't really have any way of holding them down this far away. Um, I'd really have to think about it, and it would be quite a bit more labor, and this sword is a, um, a customer build, a commission, so trying to build it to a certain price point, um, this is kind of one of the compromises, I think. It's not. It's nothing major. I mean, we're literally talking a slight extension and curvature to these pieces, but the amount of work it would take would just be not worth it. So you may have noticed that I cut some of these pieces long. It's actually the whole thing is long, um, just so I could fit everything up and then trim this back um, once I had measured it out and fitted it up on the sword itself. So. I've done that. I need to cut about three sixteenths of an inch off the, um, you know, from this edge all the way down. So um, that should get me close. I can sand it down, uh, you know, to hand fit it the rest of the way. But this will give me the majority of the uh, material removal I need. So, they came out pretty well, I think. Nice straight cut. I'll uh, gotta cut the other one and then I'll test fit these. All right, so here's our mock-up as I'm trimming the corner pieces. It looks pretty good. This right one came out slightly bigger than the left one. Um, there's a tiny bit of a gap between the edge of there or over here it's uh, I don't think you can see it, I think it's in the shadow but it's much closer over there just by a uh, sixteenth of an inch or so so maybe even less um, so I'll probably just sand this one a bit just to make it fit a little bit better but it looks pretty good once I'm done sanding, it's, I, it's time to make this hinge that goes right over these two pieces and kind of, uh, you know, join them together. And that'll be it for the blade. It's getting there. So I apparently forgot to um, hit record on the camera, but as you can see, I've plug welded each of the three pieces on both sides and then I have to be very careful not to touch this I actually joined the three pieces together where there was a seam um, just to give you know more strength they have the combined strength of the three plug welds now instead of each one kind of uh, being individual 
Um, now I just have to grind them all back, you know, smooth again. And I just have to kind of pound down those corners that are just on the edge. You can see the little tiny gap in there. All right, so I've got the uh, the hinge pieces all cut out. I just need to sand them down, get all these burrs off of them. I'm going to round the edges of the hinge pins, and then I'm going to grind a little bevel in both sides of the pieces here. So this will kind of sit on top and inside slightly, and I'll weld it all together um, from the underside. Uh, it'll give a uh, convincing hinge appearance with zero functionality whatsoever. I'm not even sure if it's actually functional on the, you know, the in-game sword in the first place. I don't remember it doing anything, so more of a decorative, fe decorative feature, but... As you can see, I've got this rigged up with magnets. I'm going to weld two tacks on the underside here that's hanging off the table. And that should hold it well enough together that, you know, when I flip it, it'll just stay together and I can full weld it on the back. And then grind it smooth so it'll lay flat on the surface of the sword. And I'll probably plug weld it to the sword itself. Just doing a quick little mock-up here. I've just placed everything where it's supposed to go, but um, it looks like everything's going to line up. I've got to check the other side of the sword, but I think it's pretty good. So, after welding these together and making it all smooth, I realized um, while I was gaining strength, I was losing some of the look I wanted. Um, these kind of lines need a little bit of a seam going this way, uh, and there was, a, there was a circular, I don't know if it's, a, if it's actually a protrusion or a, an indentation, it looks different in different pictures, but there's a circular shape right there, so I just kind of roughed it out with some marker. Uh, I'm just going to etch it partially into the metal, so I keep the strength of the weld, but it looks more like what I want. So, here's the end result. It's not perfect, but I think it looks better than it did. I think in the future, um, I'll cut this whole piece out, um, one piece, instead of four pieces and trying to weld them together, and then, as you see, try to make it look like it's one piece. It's not bad, but uh, it could be better. By the way, if you're wondering, that circle, um, all you do is you center punch a, a little mark right in the center, and then you can use a rotor brooch um, without, it's basically just a hole saw without a center drill. It's just got a little pin, a spring mounted pin to, um, I think you can see that, probably, spring mounted pin that will center itself in that center punch, um, and then you just grind it. That, sent that little tiny divot out um, or you can just fill it with a tiny tack weld and grind it back but either way, either way to make a nice perfect circle without trying to do it freehand so time for the brassing 
I've got these all done, as good as they're going to get. I've kind of hammered it onto this sacrificial piece of steel down here. And I'm going to heat this with the, uh, the torch. And uh, I've got some different kinds of um, brass brushes and so forth. And I'm going to attempt to melt the brass onto the surface. Very thin layer, but um, I think it'll produce the nicest finish. I could just braise it onto the surface, but it just it leaves kind of a lumpy, ugly finish, and uh, I'm just not a huge fan of it. Granted, I've never done it this way, so we're going to find out. So, there you have it. Let me see if I can get a better lit side. Looks really dark on the viewfinder, but uh, you get the idea. Um, I'm not sure how much of the footage I'm going to show, but um, I struggled with the brass, and it turned out that I was heating the steel too much. Uh, it just seemed like the brass wasn't sticking at all. It, if anything, it was just kind of vaporizing. Uh, once I let the steel cool down, maybe two or three hundred degrees, it went on pretty well. Um, as you saw, I used a combination of those, the cups, the wheels, and a lot of handwork. Um, these little guys. Um, by the way, don't use plastic brushes because they melt. Yeah. Just doing a bit of test fitting over here. But um, it looks like... The heat warped these thin pieces a bit. You can see how the gap is tiny on the side. I'm just going to have to bend this back into place. But um, that's all the brassing for the sword. Time to start attaching stuff. So we're looking pretty good here. I've got that outer rim in place with those magnets. So when I remove this clamp... I'd say that looks pretty good. I think we're ready to start welding. So, I knocked over my camera on the tripod and I filmed a bunch of more footage but it turns out the camera was broken it looked like it was recording fine but when I reviewed the footage later it was all it was recorded but it was distorted and it had artifacts all over the screen and everything so I'm not sure I haven't gone through all the footage I'm not sure what I lost exactly but here we are right now um, Everything has been attached permanently. Um, all this stuff is welded on. I plug welded the centerpiece on, plug welded this and this, and it's welded underneath this um, buckle hitch, hinge type thing. There's a weld underneath, underneath there holding everything together. Um, the corner pieces are just tacked on for now. You can see, I don't know if you can see the ends are still open. Uh, I think I'm actually going to pull them off and I'm going to work on the handle. The um, Attaching the handle here will be easier without the corners, I think. Especially when I'm grinding back the welds, it'll be difficult to get in this, this angle. You can see they stick out further. Um, so I'll probably attach the, the corners last. 
Um, that's about it. You probably missed a lot of welding and grinding and boring stuff, but oh well. At least I have a uh, new camera now, and there's no um, dots all over the screen. You may have noticed that before. That was from grinding sparks that actually, um, you know, hit the lens. So I have a I have a lens cover on this now to prevent prevent that from happening. So. There you have it. Back to work. So, time for the handle. Uh, as you can see, I just cut out 17 inches. Um, I need to round off that end kind of a ball shape um, that's going to be the quote-unquote pommel and to do so I've actually got this uh, new little toy I'm trying this is a two inch three jaw chuck um, it's small enough I can actually chuck it up in a drill like this and so it'll let me spin this uh, maybe Actually, spins it pretty, uh, pretty straight. Um, I may, I may revise this and use this as a poverty lathe of of sorts, maybe on my drill press. But for now, I'm just gonna sand the end of this consistently by spinning this on a belt sander, as you will see shortly. So, oh, lots of cutting and sanding, but here are the main pieces of the handle. Um, these pieces are just thick wall tubing, just cut to size, and they're going to be welded on, and the welds ground back for one continuous piece. Um, this end of the handle has to be rounded over, and this piece has to be tapered slightly. This piece has two grooves in it, and this piece has one groove in it, so time to set up my property lathe. There's that collar on the end of the handle. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to weld it on the right side. Um, I'll grind it back, but the handle will cover any, uh, the, sorry, the hand wrap will cover any sort of imperfections. Well, here's all the pieces of the handle. Uh, I got the tapered end. I've got the, um, this is gonna be the collar by the guard, and then this piece is gonna go on top of it. Like so. I'll weld those together on the inside, and then once the handle attach, I'll put these this on and then weld it on the bottom most likely.
Can I help you? So, we're just about to weld on here. Um, as usual, I beveled out the section to be welded. I'm going to fill that in with weld and then when I grind it back it'll be a nice seamless join. So that's the palm mold on here. I think it came out pretty well. This side a little bit rough, but the handle wrap is going to go there and it should cover up any tiny imperfections. The other side is basically perfect. Alright, so I'm getting ready to attach the handle. Need to do a bit of brass work on the collar and on the pommel first. And we'll get to weld them. All right, so I spent the last hour or so getting ready to attach the handle to the sword. Uh, I almost screwed up and didn't place the collar down here so that I can slide it up and weld it into place once the uh, handle is attached. Uh, that would have been embarrassing. But um, I think I've got it right. Um, it seems very close. I don't know if you can see this, but the handle is four tenths of a degree off of level, you know, level with the ground or in general. And Let's see if I can carefully remove that. So, three tenths. So, I'm one tenth, the handle is one tenth of a degree off from the rest of the sword. Um, so, that's close enough. Uh, if I try to mess with it, it's gonna just make it worse. So, for side to side, what I've done is I marked a line, a center line on the sword, and I'm using a laser um, just to kind of paint all the way down. Let's see if this works. Hey, um, can you see that? Hey, you should be able to see the laser. I can't tell on the viewfinder, but let's hopefully it's there. Um, Basically, the idea is if the laser goes down the center, it should go down the center of the handle as well. It's pretty close. It looks like the handle is leaning slightly. Um, actually, it needs to come this way to the left. But it's really close. I can see that. It's just a tiny bit off. What I'm going to do is instead of messing with it any further, I'm just going to weld it on the left side there and let it cool first. And that'll kind of pull the handle slightly that way. And then once it's cooled, then I'll weld on the right side and that'll lock it in, pla in place. Uh, that's the plan anyway, just to work with the, the warpage instead of trying to fight it. But even if I screwed it up, it is so close. Even down here, yeah, about 18 inches away, it can't be more than a sixteenth of an inch off, I would say. So, whatever. Worst case scenario, once I weld it, I can always try to bend it, especially with it's just a tack or two in place. But I think this will be good. Well, I don't know how much I got on film, but it's all welded on. It took about three passes 
you can see I just kind of glopped it on at the end. I just needed some extra material that I could, um, you know, grind back uh, flush so that I can get the, um, the collar on and then weld that in place. So I'm going to grind that down and then sand it and uh, hopefully the fitment is pretty good. All right, so I got this whole transition ground down nice and smooth, nice and straight. That's the prettiest thing, but that collar is going to cover it. Uh, and speaking of, I also ground a groove in here. And this is why. So I'm just going to weld into that groove, and then I'll be able to sand and grind it all back. So it's a nice seamless weld, just like on this side. Um, that'll secure this piece in place. It'll hide my ugly work. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to weld these corner pieces on there, over there, right there. And that's it. All right, that wasn't too bad. I got both uh, corner pieces welded on and kind of glopped up so I can grind that all back. This is uh, welded under there. Um, this is just soot to protect it from uh, getting any spatter on that part. But I still got a chunk there when the welder misfired and I end up just kind of lightly grazing that part off the See if I can just kind of knock that off, but it's coming together. Got some grinding and sanding to do, and uh, we'll see how it comes out. All right, all the welding and grinding and sanding is done. Um, I did hit all these edges with uh, 80 grit random orbital. Just to kind of take the sharpness away, because this is where, that's really hot. Uh, your hands are going to be in this vicinity, and you don't really need, you know, probably a 45 pound sword. You can be digging in, um, just be helpful a bit. So, i uh, just got to brass this, these, and find any places that need fixed. A little bit to sand it off there, and so forth, uh, there. Um, just finish that up and we'll be done with the construction at that point. Well, she's basically done. All the construction, the welding, sanding, grinding, and brassing is done. Um, it's pretty good. All I really gotta do is clean it up and blacken it now. Uh, it's getting late. I'll do that tomorrow. Alright, so two hours later of very careful masking and cleaning and everything. I need the surface uh, as good as it's gonna get anyway. Um, I think we're ready to go. The product I'm using here is uh, Birchwood Casey Super Blue, highly concentrated gun bluing formula. It should give me a pretty nice black.
All right, so I cut out a few hours of uh, cleanup and detail and error correction and so forth, but this is what it looks like. I just uh, oiled it up to keep it from rusting. Um, only thing left to do, leather hand wrap, and then I gotta sharpen the blade. And that should pretty much be it. Uh, the brass kind of took on a little more of a aged look than I wanted. I was looking for something really bright, but I think it looks good. It looks a little more realistic this way, I think, instead of kind of a fake, perfect, you know, gleam. But yeah, not too bad. Um, almost there. All right, so time to sharpen this bad boy. Uh, I'm going to use my work sharp, work sharp over here. I'm going to start with 80 grit and work my way up to, I think it's 6,000 grit. Um, it'll take several phases and a couple hours, but it's not too bad. And we just got the handles to do and we are done. All right, so we're all sharpened up here. Uh, just time to do the hand wrap. Uh, I've sanded this down so it's nice, bright, clean, bare metal. Got my red leather, and this is just three quarter inch by one eighth, and uh, it's just gonna get cemented on leather cement and a little bit of super glue. So one of the annoying parts to having long handles like this is it's basically impossible to find leather long enough to uh, to reach the, all the way. Usually it's much, much worse than this because uh, a lot of times you overlap the leather so it would only come, you know, that far or something like that. But I almost made it. Um, to join the ends here, instead of just butting them up against each other, they'll, you know, because they'll just pull away. Uh, I don't know if you can see, it's shaved down. You can see the gap gets larger. And then I, the other end of it, this is a piece of scrap, same idea, I just, I'm shaving it down right now. So when you lay them over each other, they kind of, uh, you can really see that, but it doesn't create a huge bump. Um, where, you know, the otherwise it would be a quarter inch thick uh, where the two pieces laid over each other uh, at that transition. So you'll still see the seam, but there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, this is as good as it gets. Well, the hand wrap's all done here. I cleaned it up. I used some acetone to get most of the glue off. Uh, it dries clear anyway, so I wasn't too concerned. I just wanted to get any kind of globs of it off. Uh, you kind of have to be careful, otherwise the acetone will uh, it'll take the dye right out. But it uh, it held up. Uh, you can see my seam here. It did pretty well. There's almost no bump. If I could get the camera to focus, that would be really nice. Come on. Nope. There we go. Yeah, just a tiny bit of imperfection, but it's not too bad. That's about it. I'm just gonna I'm just cleaning up the sword now, oiling it. Going to uh, make it perfect and take some nice pictures of it. All right, so we're in my basement dungeon here, and I realized I forgot something. A little detail, there's supposed to be a little brass nut right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill that out and I'm going to use something like this. It's just a little stud with a nut on either end and I'll just lock tight that in, in place. Uh, I thought I was done, but one more step.
Oh, time to see how this bad boy feels. Pretty heavy, but I measured it at uh, 45 pounds. Not too bad. Actually, uh, one of the lightest swords I've ever made. <sighs> Much easier like this, that's for sure. So, uh, that's about it. If you like what you saw, give me a like, shoot me a subscribe. Um, you're probably going to want to turn on notifications. I only post videos every few months, so they're just going to get uh, stuck. Or rather, just disappear. You'll never see it. Um, shoot me a comment. Let me know what you think about the sword and what you'd like to see next. Thinking Dark Souls, maybe Final Fantasy, not really too sure, but I'll get some ideas. Till next time.